<clears throat> Welcome back to the Pulp Mix Fantasy Show presented by Maxis Tire. My name is Donnie. In this video, we are talking Detroit today. I have five riders to pay special attention to this weekend, stats for the FFL, details on the race day itself, and of course, I look at my early team that I'm setting before qualifying. Starting out the video though, it does look like Michael Moseman is set to return this week after sitting out Indianapolis following a crash at Daytona, but no official announcement from rider or team, so I would go ahead and keep him off of your early list for now. 450 class, we still await the return of 2021 Pro Motocross champion Dylan Brandis, who has been missing since Houston, as well as Colt Nichols, who will rest at least one additional weekend after a qualifying crash at Daytona. Another reminder to pay attention to those red crosses next to the rider's names to keep injured guys off of your team. And after qualifying is done, hit the little box at the top of your team page to filter out all of the riders who didn't even bother to set a time for a better chance at minimizing zeros. Before we talk riders, reminder that next week we head back to the West Coast. So this is the last time we're going to see this pack of 250 guys for a while. So don't worry about saving anybody for next week, as the next time we see these guys, they will all be available and pickable on your screen. All right, three guys to target, one to avoid, high handicap guy if you're looking to gamble. First guy on the list is one that comes with a warning, and that's Jordan Smith. He's not an awful choice at all, and he's looked very rejuvenated this season aboard the Star Racing Yamaha, but Jordan is now down to just a two handicap, and that doesn't allow much wiggle room as he has to land on the podium to max out. He's finished on the podium just three of seven main event and triple crown gate drops this season, and quite frankly, I just think that there are better picks out there with bigger safety nets with a little bit more consistency to go with them. A guy that I do like in that class is once again Talon Hawkins. The Rockstar rookie is having a quiet, unplanned rookie season, filling in for the injured league swole, and he comes in with a seven handicap here despite an average finish of 14th. He has safely made every single main event this season and has only seen action in one LCQ. Talon puts himself in the position for big points by getting good starts. Quite frankly, I just don't think there's a better value on the board than his seven handicap this week. On to the 450s, I had a tough time deciding between Chase and Eli for this one, but the 23 is getting the nod here. Both come in with a two handicap and Chase has the better numbers. You might think, yeah, yeah, but Chase crashes a ton. And you're right, that is true. But he's been on the podium in 10 of 13 mains and crowns and has been top five in all but one even with those crashes. I was told by the team that he did twist an ankle in his fall in Indy, so I would maybe be a little wary if his qualifying seems a bit off pace, but for now I'm rolling with the 23. A double eligible 450 guy to snag this weekend is the Chiz. He sat Daytona and he has been honest about not being 100% healthy lately, but the Chiz don't care. He still put up his best result of the year in Indy with a 14th. It is no coincidence that Ken and Shane are both making strides as the year goes on as HEP dials in that Suzuki. And as the class continues to stay a bit thin for now, this is the time to strike with these higher handicap guys that you don't have to worry about missing the main. The high handicap hero of the round given to a rider with a handicap of 10 or more that I think has a realistic chance to score massive points this weekend if you're the type of person that likes to sweat out a little bit of LCQ action for a big payout. It's Cade. It's always Cade. Mr. Clayson started the year off slow, missing two mains to open the season, but since then he has gone 6 for 7 and still somehow comes in with a 12 handicap. He is riding much better than his four 20th place finishes might suggest. And remember that Detroit is somewhat special to him. An Ohio native, it is pretty close to being called a home race for him. In addition to giving him the best result of his career, logging his only career top 10 here last year. The FFL scene has finally been set straight just in time to switch coasts. As Hunter has a clear cut grasp on the class with three, including the last two in a row. 450 side, Kenny does the improbable whole shot and leading wire to wire on the old RMZ 450 to add another wrinkle to it all. Early season favorite Chase Sexton hasn't been seen up front since week six in Oakland, but he and Eli are always the most prominent threats in the class. Midwest rounds mean Midwest weather and with a cold weekend on the horizon with highs in just the 20s. No fan fest in Detroit, but it will be nice and warm in the enclosed Ford Field for fans and riders alike. Your typical East Coast schedule with qualifying coverage beginning at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. Rotomoto patrons get the enhanced cheat sheet 30 minutes earlier than the rest of y'all at 5.30 Eastern before the basic cheat sheets are dropped on Twitter and Instagram about one hour before the gates drop, which they will at 7 p.m. Eastern for Pacific. Before I show you my team, I want to talk about Max's tire coming on for all 17 rounds of the Supercross season so that I can deliver these videos for you. 
you know Max's tire, you know their MX ST tire design by the king of Supercross and my all-time favorite rider, Jeremy McGrath. It is the newest and most advanced tire in the Maxxis MX lineup featuring an all new tread pattern, compound and composition to provide the stability, predictability and traction that the upper tiers of motocross demand. Available at your local retailer and also at motosport.com. My Thursday team looks like this. I have Max Ancy penciled in at an all-star with a three, Henry Miller with a five, Talon Hawkins sporting a seven handicap and I am partying with Hardy Munoz at an eight. 450 side, give me Chase Sexton with his two. I'm also looking at Dino coming in with a three handicap, Iron Man Josh Hill with a five, and rolling the dice with big rig Benny Bloss with his nine. The prize for the highest championship league score in Detroit will be an autographed Michael Mosman jersey, but if you're not great at fantasy, that is okay. If you want a chance to win authentic race shoes and autograph memorabilia, consider joining me over on Patreon versus about $1 per week. You're entered to win race shoes and autograph memorabilia. Insiders and above double their entries, as well as an exclusive podcast talking fantasy stats on every rider in the field and that enhanced cheat sheet that comes out every single Saturday. Link for that is in the description below. And don't forget to follow at PulpMXFantasy and at RotoXMoto on both Instagram and Twitter for injury updates as the weekend rolls on, qualifying info and stats and banter throughout the race itself, and those fantasy cheat sheets once qualifying is done and wrapped. Thanks as always for watching the Pulp MX Fantasy Show presented by Max's Tire. My name is Donnie and may your chizzes chizz this weekend. Remember that eight is great. And most importantly, have fun. Good luck, y'all.